Tēnā koutou katoa. Kia inoi tātou. Whakataka te hau ki te uru. Whakataka te hau ki te tunga. Kia mā kina kina ki o tā. Kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hia ki ana te atā kura. He tio, he hoka, he hauhu. Tūturu whakamaua ki a tīna. Tīna. Haumi e, hui e, tāe ki e. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko te tarai o rā heri te maunga, ko manga kāhia te awa, ko nuku tāwhiti te whare, ko nāti toki te hapu, ko nā toki mata whaoro te waka, Ko nga puhi te iwi. Nō reira tēnā koutou. Ko Oreo Ruka tōku ingoa. E mihi anā hau kia tātou katoa. I roto i tēnei wā rereke ara ki te mate urutā, te mate karauna wano hoki. Nō reira e te whanau i ngā hāpori katoa. Kia u ki ngā tikanga, ko te tūmanako, kia pai tō koutou noho i tō kainga. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora tātou katoa. My name is Oreo Ruka, and firstly, I just wanted to acknowledge these very different times for all of us, and in my mihi, hope that all and everyone is safe in their homes and are found working safe in our communities. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has tuned in today to be part of this, to be part of our kōrero tonight. Your voice and views matter to us. Again, I am Oreo Ruka. A kai whakahaere for Northern Regional Council, Hononga Māori, the Māori Relationships Manager. Firstly, I'd like to just introduce here the people that are our panellists tonight to join in and support the kōrero we have around our representation review. And I want to thank them for being here, given there is so much going on in our uh, communities. Firstly, I'd like to welcome our Northern Regional Council Chair, Penny Smart. Kia ora, Penny. Uh, secondly, Fire Nora, our fire from Ngāti here, who will also be sharing our mahi and our journey with Te Tai Tukaro Māori and Council Working Party and the partnership that we have forged with Council and with Hapu and Iwi in regards to this work. Uh, our councillors, Councillor Amy McDonald joins us tonight. Also Councillor Marty Robinson, who is also the co-chair for Te Tau Tokoro Māori and Council Working Party, alongside Pita Tipani, who hands his apologies in for tonight, but has also been an integral, uh, uh, shown integral leadership for the Te Tau Tukaro Māori and Council Working Party to be able to talk about the work we do together. And our uh, Northern Regional Council uh, Acting uh, General, uh, sorry, Group Manager, Ben Lee, or strategy, governance, and engagement. Sorry, everyone. And then finally, Dale Osospi from Election Services, joining us as well too. Kia tato. Thank you. So look, I'm here just to act as a bit of a uh, MC facilitator for, for this quarter or tonight and give you a quick overview of the kaupapa um, and how today's virtual hui will run. We'll spend a little time explaining the background, why we do a representation review, 
had builds on existing mahi between council and Māori tangata whenua and the knuckle, the nuts and bolts of what's being proposed tonight. But the really important bit this evening is being here to answer your questions and comments. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. So I just want to re reiterate, you would have seen, simply type your questions into the comments box. Um, you can submit questions anytime throughout uh, this virtual week. And it'll be visible for other attendees as well too. So if other attendees think it's a good question, they can like your question and push it to the top of the list that we'll look to answer tonight. Finally, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Uh, housekeeping, we will be recording this so that those that can't make it tonight can have a, I guess, a listen and a, in their own time to the corridor tonight. So I am just finally, we're going to start answering questions around about 6.30 p.m. But now I am going to hand over to our chair, Penny Smart, for her part of the corridor. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou katoa. Ko tūtumoe toku manga, ko wairo toku awa. Ko kaipara toku moana, ko Penny Smart aho. So I'm Penny Smart and I'm chair of the Northern Regional Council. I too would like to acknowledge that we're in a COVID lockdown and also the, um, acknowledge the stress that that does put us all under. I think if we stick together, uh, we will get through this together. Really pleased to be online, to, online tonight and thank you um, also from my perspective for joining us. So a representation review is about providing fair and effective representation for Totokoro Northland communities at the council table. Every council is required to review the representation arrangements at least every six years, or if, they, if Maori wards are introduced. In October last year, the NRC Council made the decision to introduce Maori constituencies, a really significant milestone that will strengthen, strengthen existing partnerships and create a council that better reflects the needs and aspirations of our entire community. We were really thrilled to see all three district councils in Northland make the same decision to formalise Māori representation on their respective councils. We are doing a representation review now so we can get new arrangements in place for the next local government election in 2022. We are looking to decide how many councillors in total we will have what area they'll represent, and how our new Maori constituencies will work. I know many people will be particularly interested in the Maori representation, representation side of things. It is worth mentioning that this representation review will not be revisit, revisiting the decision as to whether or not to have Maori ward seats. That decision, as I said, was made last October. This representation review process is it about, is about deciding how it will actually work. The proportion of Māori seats versus general seats is worked out by a legislative formula. It's based on the decision we make on the total number of councillors and the latest available electoral population statistics. So we have some discretion over the total size of capital council, but not what the makeup of Māori versus general seats is. Voting works in the same way as for central government elections. If you're on the Māori roll, you vote for those standing in the Māori constituency. If you're on the general roll, you vote for the candidate standing in the general constituency. So that means one vote for each person. Once elected, councillors sign an oath to represent and make decisions for the good of all Taitokoro Northlanders. We know there's no single right way to create mutually acceptable and supported partnerships between Māori and councils. In reality, there are, ways, there are many ways to work together effectively and a suite of approaches is needed. Creating Māori seats is about strengthening existing partnerships between Māori and council. So please remember to keep submitting your questions. I'll now hand over to our Tautokoro Māori Advisory Group member, Nora Ramaka, 
to talk about the journey for Totoko Māori and NRC. Hmm. Kia ora. On to our next slide. Kia ora tātou. E mihi a tēnā kia koe e pini. Mo tēnī wāhanga ka puta mai nei kia hau. Ko nōra, ko orongo te pā, ko tākau te awa, ko mātātua te waka, ko ngā tirehi te haku, ko ngā puhi te iwi. Ko nōra rāme ka taku ingoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kia ora no tātou katoa. E tātou, I guess one of the first things I have been with TMAC, and I must say at this stage to say, e mihi a tūna hau kia Dover Sands. Oda. Mo tana kaha ki te mahi, in NRC, when he was a councillor, to actually set up the TMAC, the Tai Tokerau Māori Advisory Committee, to work alongside the NRC Council. So I really am really honoured to actually be part of TMAC. The journey for TMAC has been that um, since 2014, um, a lot of hui's were held, with, uh, facilitated by um, Bill Shepherd at that time, and also Dover Samuels, to actually to actually work with Maori, iwi, iwi groups and and um, and hapu. Noreda kami here to get Dover. This kind of conversation, I guess, has been a long time coming in terms of the review for representation. We find that, um, that in 2018, we, as, as TMAC, a symposium for, for, for local bodies, if you like, but also for NRC, um, and Whānau District Council and Whangarei District Council, where Māori uh, committees that came from those, those groups within Whānau District Council and NRC and Whangarei District Council, uh, Whānau District Council, a symposium was, was actually was, was held in Waitangi, uh, and that discussion was really about actually having Māori uh, seats on all councils. So come here to the NRC uh, for their uh, support in their last council meeting to actually allow this to happen. And during our time in TMAC, in Te Taitukarau Māori, just our Māori Advisory Committee, um, one of the things that I have noticed is that the relationship between NRC and Māori has improved. Why does that happen? That has happened because um, council is actually open to actually now meeting Māori on their own grounds. So meeting Māori in, in, in their own marais and actually listening, listening to the issues that Māori, each whānau and hapu have and, uh, and those are the, the important things why I think it's time uh, of the representation for Māori on, on, these, um, on, the, on these committees now. Nō reira e mihi a tūna kia NRC. Uh, they began the journey, I guess, uh, in, in, in actually agreeing as the first council to actually have Māori representation on the committee. No reira kia koutou koutou, tēnā koutou. Oh, kia ora, Whaenora. Just before we go on to the next slide, um, over to Bini, he mihi. Uh, uh, rangatira tēnei kia koe, Whaenora. Mō tō mahi kaha kei runga i tērā um, āhuatanga. He mihi aroha. Thank you, Whaenora, and thank you for sharing um, the history as well too. It's a short time to do that because it reflects a, a long amount of work that's been done over the last, since 2014, Whainora? Kapai. Mm -hmm. 
So before I go over to Ben, Vainora, um, I just want to remind everyone to keep submitting your questions. We are going to have time for our panelists to, to respond to your questions. And um, yeah, so kapai. So I am now going to hand over to Ben Lee on to our next part of our uh, presentation to give some details around the technical details around what's being proposed. Tēnā koe whaenora. Kia ora, Oriel. Um, so yeah, kia ora koutou, uh, ko Ben Lee, um, aho. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of detail around the proposal. Um, I know many of you probably had a look at the consultation document, um, which sets out what council is proposing. But for those that haven't, I um, really recommend you go onto our website, and that's nrc.govt.nz, and the page is backslash representation matters. Um, so we've worked with a range of people, um, including those on our Māori Advisory Committee to TMAC to put together what we think is uh, the model that we think best serves our community. Um, so we currently have nine councillors in total, and the proposal is to keep that same number. And so what that then means is we've got a total of nine councillors, that would mean seven uh, councillors elected from the general constituencies, and two councillors from our region-wide constituency, which we're proposing to call Taraki. Um, and I'm going to come back to those, those numbers um, on the next slide. Um, when, when we're looking at how we create the number of constituencies we have in the geographic area that they, um, the geographic area that they represent, we've got to consider a few things. Um, one is we need to try as best as we can make sure that the areas represent the regional com the communities of interest, i.e. those places in, uh, that people identify with. The other thing we need to think about is effective representation. And what that means is um, the ability to have some reasonable access to your local councillor, but also spreading that workload um, across councillors as well. And the last thing um, is that each councillor um, is must represent about the same number of people, and that's within plus or minus 10%. Um, and that actually has quite a strong bearing on how the, uh, we, we can draw the boundaries up um, yeah, and how we can future-proof for, for growth areas. Right, could I have the next so slide, please? Right, so um, this table here, what this... Uh, what this is showing is actually we've got quite a lot of flexibility in terms of the total number of count councillors we can have. Um, Penny uh, earlier referred to the legislative formula which determines the, the makeup of council and you'll see that this is kind of the output on the screen uh, depending on the total council, the size of council there. So you'll see that the number of Māori councillors and the general um, constituency councillors there. You'll also see there that we've got a column that um, the remuneration column. Um, so what happens? Central government it sets a pool of funding for count, paying councillors, um, and that's that's the same amount every year, um, and it's regardless of how many councillors we have. And so this year that pool is about five hundred eighty thousand. So what that column shows is the average pay for a councillor uh, for those total number of councillors. Again, it's just the average. Um, there's councillors have different responsibilities and so they get paid according to two responsibilities. So we think uh, a total council size of nine is a number that's working well. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a balance around spreading the workload but also to be able to enable some good agile decision making. The other consideration um, that, that councillors were brought in took into mind here was also the, the actual pay that a councillor gets. So they're really conscious about making sure that it's at a sufficient level so it's, uh, it's actually a viable career option. And so that we can start to attract more younger age groups and other people from other backgrounds as well. So that's just a really quick overview. Um, so, and I just wanna, um, yeah, so rather than me talking, now's a good time to maybe start looking at those questions and comments and um, pass you back over to you, Oriel. Kia ora, Ben. Thank you for that. Well, we have, it's interesting, Ben, I'm just coming back in while we um, go back to our panellists so we can get ready to answer some of these questions and, um, and have our panellists ready to answer some of the questions. But 
One of the questions I can see there, which is quite interesting, Ben, you mentioned about encouraging young people um, to, to be able to come in and put their hand up for council. There's a question there that is being asked around, is there a, a council for young people being led by young people? So, so can you repeat that question, Aura? Yep, so absolutely. Right. Is there a youth council led by young people? And I'll ask Penny as well too. So just give her the heads up to prepare for the answer to that question. <laughs> so, so no, so no, our, our council, our regional council does not have a, a youth council. It just has uh, the council, which is the elected councillors. Kia ora, Penny. Kia ora. Uh, no, it, it, Ben's correct. Uh, we have had some discussions about um, getting some younger members on, and, and I think that Amy is a really, Councillor MacDonald is a really good example of that. We certainly are attracting younger people, as are all councils around Aotearoa, uh, to be fair. The number in the last election rose considerably, and Dale could probably comment on that. Uh, so we're heading in the right direction. The other thing that we do have as a uh, local government New Zealand sector, uh, we do have a youth council on that body. And so they are a group of under 40s, I think. Amy, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. It might be 35. I think it was 35 and they raised it to 40. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're very active at a um, Aotearoa local government NZ level. Um, mm -hmm. And in our recent conference uh, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, we voted to have a appointed youth council member on the national council from now on. Mm. So that young voice is being heard and it will only progress. Kia ora. Mm. Kia ora. I will go to you, Dale, just to see Dale what it's like across the country in terms of youth, um, youth representation. What does that look like, Dale? Yeah, look, I don't have these statistics with me, but there has been a significant increase uh, at the last elections in 2019 of younger people getting elected onto council. Um, but I don't have this figures, but it is promising and, and really good. Mm. Okay, so yeah, Amy, you're the, um, you, you are living that experience. Can I just ask you what that's been like for you as uh, one of the younger councillors on the Northern Regional Council and what that's taken? Uh, kia ora, Aurel. Um, kia ora, everybody. Kua Amy McDonald, Koko Ingoa. Um, yes, I'm a, I think I, I think we're called young elected members, not youth. So I think okay, cool. I interpret youth to be younger than myself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a good, there's a growing, um, I guess, movement of younger elected members, which are the under 40s, which is really cool. And um, Penny, you're right that um, we're getting better representation nationally, which is really great. Um, I think it's a really good question, though, about youth, um, and I consider youth to be sort of more like your under 20s. Um, I know that mm -hmm. district council do have a youth um, council, I'm not sure, quite sure what they're called, but they do have a formal group that they engage with who are um, younger. And um, I certainly think it's something which is of real value because a lot of the issues that we are making decisions about are um, long term issues. So what the young people think is really important. So. Um, yeah, I guess it's just an area that we can look to grow into the future and really good question, good point raised. Thank you. Tilda, mm, thank you. Pehe o tō whakaaro whaia Nora. I think it, the, a lot of Māori rangatahi now are looking at a political stand and, the, and, and if you look at Far, uh, far North District Council with uh, our mm. young man there now. Councillor uh, Tapania. Yeah, and, and I think that there's a whole lot of possibilities of actually getting young Māori rangatahi actually involved with, at this mm. level. Mm. Thank you for that. All right, I'm just going to move to another question. Um, this one is a technical question. So um, it's come from Oliver. Kia ora, Oliver. Would we consider a single Northland wide general constituency with seven councillors elected at large? That would give us on the general role much more choice than just being able to cast a single vote for a candidate. Who's putting their hand up for that one? Kia ora, Penny. 
Uh, Oliver, thank you for your question. Yes, it is a possibility, and I think it has been done in the past. Um, however, I'm not sure that it's worked particularly well because there's no other council in, in Aotearoa that I know of that, that does it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think uh, you may, you know, the obvious problem would be that you'd get seven or nine councillors all standing in the one area um, and they wouldn't be, um, they wouldn't know the, the, the region in total. Like we've got um, Councillor Kitchen up in Tehiku and obviously he knows all the local concerns mm. up in Tehiku and myself and Kaipara and the same sort of thing. So I think we'd lose that localism to a large extent. So uh, that I think is the reason why we don't. Dale, have you got any comments on that? I would tend to agree with you there. There would be a strong danger that all seven would come from one area such as Whangarei uh, and there'll be no representation from the, from other parts of the region. So um, yeah, it can be done, uh, but we'd probably suggest that it's uh, not, not a good thing. Mm. Kapai, thank you for that. Another interesting question has just come through um, from Marcus, just wondering, what our thoughts are on the future of council representation in light of the local government reforms that are happening in the pipeline. Maybe I should pass that on to you, Ben, government reforms. Uh, happy to have a first go at that. Have a crack. Anyone else jump in after me? Um, mm. uh, yeah, local government reform is on, on the horizon, but we are not sure about what that looks like and what the shape of local government will will be here for in, in Northland. Um, I, I, I think, and the, the, this council's direction is, is that we are just trucking on as per normal. Um, we've got an election next year and um, there may be some more certainty around what the future of local government looks like. But um, I, the, yeah, I don't, I don't think council would be changing in any way around how it holds its elections and how it would be encouraging people to stand, to be voted on to council, et cetera. Um, Councillor Robinson, I haven't asked you to come in and ask, would you like to have uh, caught it all on that question at all, given you're also to the co-chair of the Te Tukro Māori and Council Working Party and the local government reforms are very strong about the partnership with Tangata Whenua? Uh, would you please re-ask the question? I dropped out sure. completely for some reason. Thanks, Will. Sure, I'll, I'll do that again. Just wondering um, your thoughts on the future of council representation in light of local government reform in the pipeline. Yeah, thanks very much for the question. Um, I am very pleased that we are getting a, uh, a representation of Māori seats in Taraki or proposed seat of Taraki, uh, just so that we can get uh, a greater input uh, of Tao Māori and uh, Taha Māori into the room. Um, which is uh, going to greatly benefit both Māori as, as well as the region as a whole uh, in being able to what, unlock doors in, in um, Taito, uh, Te Tai Tokarau's um, uh, toolbox, I suppose. Mm. So you're pleased at the way that it's going ahead. Mm. Kia ora Māori. Kapai. I have got another question here from... Uh, Kelly. Kelly is asking her question in terms of equal rights as per the Tiriti Partnership Agreement. Wondering why, why not more than two Māori representatives to equal the council general representation is not being considered. Great question. Um, I'll, I'll uh, that one. Um, so the, the number of Māori seats is determined by essentially a formula. And that formula is based on the number of, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Dale, but it's based on the number of uh, Māori on the electoral roll? Or is it on the... No, it's it's based on the Māori electoral population and the general electoral population. That gives you a percentage. And then you multiply that by the total number of councillors. And as you're per your um, table before, it showed that if there were nine, then there would be two and seven. So, so the basic answer is that we're, we're actually constrained by legislation for how many how many Māori seats we can we can have at, at this point in time. Mm. Kia ora, Whaia Nora. I knew you'd put your hand up, Whaia Nora. 
ਕਿੱਥੇ ਨਾ ਖੋਏ ਔਰ ਜਸ ਕੀ ਤੇ ਮਿਊਟ ਹੋ ਫੋਰ ਯੂ ਫਾਨੋਰਾ ਜਸ ਦੀ ਗਾ ਕਿਉਂਦਾ ਇਹ ਮੈਂ ਹੀ ਤੇ ਨਕੀ ਤੇ ਪਾਤਾ ਆਈ ਗੈਸ ਫੋਰ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਥੈਟਸ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਰੀਲੀ ਵਾਟ ਦਾ ਟ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਮੀਨਸ ਇਟ ਮੀਨਸ ਇਕੋ ਪਾਰਟਨਰਸ਼ਿਪ and i guess at this stage it listening to you being in our uh, and dale's response it seems to us we actually are taking that 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 um the law the law <laughs> into its context and so it's different for how maori actually have a perspective it actually of the treaty of waitangi which means that we actually believe that equal representation but because of the law we actually not mm-hmm. able to implement that and i guess that's what i'm taking from this corridor uh um tonight mm-hmm. and and the moe moe a for maori has always been equal to be equal to be to have the same equity as everyone else in our own country and so i i totally go the the party but i uh, but i understand the perspective of the LAW. Kyora mm. fire Nora, cope up a whole in the tena kya katata katoa. I'm just going to ask Penny, Penny, given this has been an ongoing quarter or since um the decision to vote for Mari um seats, pe he o fa ka ro Penny. Kore oreo. Yeah, I I think that as I said, I think in my opening that uh what we've got at the moment uh, we are restricted we are restrained however my rewards are only one tool in our toolbox at nrc and other councils we have many others tt mac is um, a good example um, on our working parties we have 50 50 um, membership of uh, tt mac members and councillors uh, so there are and there are many other um, co well, not many others, but there are some co-governance arrangements. Uh, there's the Kaipu Moana Remediation and the uh, Ninety Mile Beach Beach Board, uh, which is co-governance. So I think watch this space, and I think the local government uh, review will turn up some good results in this respect as well. Kia ora. Kia ora. We've got a couple more questions around Māori seats and constituencies, so I'm just going to, if we can, just carry on with the the flow of those questions. Um, here it is, with the Mighty Wards, we've, we, how did we come up with the configuration for two councillors over the whole rohe? Did council consider like north and south or even east and west? Um, again, I'll, I'll jump in quickly. Thank you. Um, so, so we've landed on one constituency and this for the whole of Northland. And this, this was based a lot on the advice from Tatimac um, around, so that was their recommendation just to have a, a single constituency. Um, one of the challenges that they recognized um, was that it's quite hard to know where to draw that line, where, where we do draw that line. Um, And what they also advised was, and this is something that council picked up, is let's give it a go this time, this next election with a one constituency for the whole of Northland. And then that's something that we can then review in a bit more detail. Um, so that um, potentially in the next, and so, and we'll also have a lot more time to have a look at whether we'd want to put a boundary somewhere or not for the election following that. Mm. Um, Penny. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Aureo. Uh, yeah, very much as Ben has uh, articulated, we see it as an interim measure to have the um, the one constituency for now. Uh, and similar to the number of councillors, um, our sort of recommendation is the nine, and that's potentially an interim measure as well, just to see how it goes, um, to have a settling in period uh, and um, give ourselves time, you know, obviously with the nine councillors uh, versus 11 say it's much easier to go up to 11 rather than come back down from 11 to nine but certainly with it was advice from our tt mac members and we were very happy to take it to go with the one for now kia ora mm. so um kia ora, i might i might just just add in there how just mm. to com- 
clarify that the adv ad, um, advice from to team at Caraweaver was um, to go with uh, 11 seats, mm. which would mean um, eight general and three Māori, because they saw that as being closer to that 50-50 uh, mm. partnership than, and then a 9-2 split. Uh, but, however, council um, went for nine for the reasons that we've, 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 I went through before. Mm. Um, Nora, just in terms of uh, now, because we're talking about TT Mac, and for those that who are going, what's TT Mac? Again, TT Mac is the acronym for Te Tai Tukaro Māori and Council Working Party. On there, there's representative of 18 at the moment, a potential of 21, but 18 iwi and hapu mandated um, representatives. Um, and um, so I just wanted to share that when we're talking about TT Mac, also to what um, council would say is the non-elected members or the tangata whenua representatives and the feedback they've given. So I'm just gonna pass that over to Whainora, who is um, also the representative for Ngāti Rehia. Kia ora, Kia ora, uh, Oreo. Um, I think we're actually really in a good space in terms of the NRC team at team because we we really are involved with actually all different levels with NRC. We actually we actually have economic development, we have climate change, we have the water, you know. So we actually are, are quite involved in and in being able to be at that level in TMAC, I think it's actually quite an advantage given that quite a few of our recommendations that we actually have every two months to NRC, most of them are taken up and followed up. We, we, I mean, there's a working, there's actually quite a, a, a lot of work that happens at, at the TMAC level, but also with, with NRC. So I find that quite an advantage. People might not see it as an advantage, but I find it in our hapu or from, from hapus that are involved TMAC, there is actually been an advantage because there are certain issues, a lot of issues that we have and, and our own local issues that we take to the table. Actually, uh, a lot of work can be done with it. I mean, there are things we don't agree with. I mean, there's not everything that NRC does that we agree with. <laughs> but mm. <laughs> we are able to work fire. through, we're able to work through at TMAC level, or and and also with the with the councillors, because the elected councillors in my and and me here to Nakaka Penny, because their that leadership up in the and, and with Marty actually also co co chairing with Pitta on the on our on TMAC, I think it, it's actually put quite a lot of work. I mean, there's work that we have to do. It's not mm. saying that we actually sit on our butts and actually and 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 and, and actually say whatever we think we should say. Mm. Um, each hapu and each iwi are actually represented in there. So the uh, what I would imagine what's thought about by Dover was that each iwi are able to represent their issues at the table at TMAC level which then actually allows the councils to actually make up a or to make a decision about some of those issues that we mightn't agree with them. So it's that kind of relationship I think I find really quite, um, it has been an advantage to work through. Mm. One of the things that, uh, that, that actually really helps also is that uh, the mana whakahono I mean, it's, it's actually there with the council, but also with hapu. And mm. I think we actually, we, we, there is advantages of having TMAC there. Kia ora, Whainora. Thank you for that, Whainora. There's a couple of questions come through and I, I might just put this out to the floor. It's similar, um, the discussions that, uh, the question is around, if it is a region-wide constituency, for the two Māori seats. There's a couple of questions similar from Liam and Brad as to um, what would be some of the risks that you have a fair representation of two Māori across the region or two Māori seats across the region. Does anyone wanna 
have a go at answering that question as well as Fainora? Well, actually, I, I guess so from, uh, from um, my perspective, I guess, is, is that um, I think it's a good start. We're starting from somewhere because it, we had nothing. You know, um, we, 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 we need to, to actually be voting ourselves. I think one of the big things that I seem to observe in terms of us as Māori is that we don't go out and vote. Mm. Mm. Kia ora whai, Nora. The two Māori seats, we actually got, we got to actually stand up for ourselves and actually make those decisions ourselves too. Because if we do want those people to begin the, the road for Māori representation, then we actually need to start doing some work on it by ourselves. So we need to, to be voting. We actually need to be, um, if we want Māori to be there, let's vote. Well Thank you, Whanora. I, I, look, the other thing too is just in terms of tonight, just encouraging people, we want to hear what you have to say, the, you know, this is a proposal around the representation review and we encourage people to make submissions as well in regards to some of these key questions that are in unprecedented times. Marty, you've just come on. Have you, would you like to just court it or to that as the TTMAC co-chair? We're just going back to the, the question on the representation. I'd like to think that TTMAC will be out there trying to get some good representations across the region, which is not to stop anybody putting their name forward or being nominated, but to be able to get what they feel is the best result for Taitokarao. Mm. So, um, and I would like to think that uh, the, well, I know that uh, the Tatimac uh, makeup to Tatimac is right across the region. Um, it's an issues based group. There's, there's no personalities or politicking coming into it. It's uh, what is best for Māori. And so I'm confident that if that were the case, then um, there would be even representation and not a perceived stacking for any personal gain or um, any uh, hapu gain. Kapai, thank you. Thank you, Mani. I am just going to now go to back to the youth question. And so one of our questions, go, have, would we consider setting up a youth advisory group? So I'm just Penny and Amy. Kia ora. I can't see Penny right now, so I guess I'll just no. go on. Um, uh, the answer is yes, we would consider that. Um, I don't think we can consider it as part of this representation review that we're currently doing, but I, I certainly think that, um, as I said earlier, a lot of the really pressing issues that we are dealing with as a regional council are long-term environmental challenges, things like climate change um, and uh, looking after our biodiversity, and I think there's absolutely a space for us to be hearing from youth and in, um, in, in all of our and all of our decision making um, I think one thing we can do in the interim and which I'm interested to do in the climate change space is take advantage of the other youth forums that are already in place so for example WDC have their one and I think there are um, other forms of youth engagement being carried out by the other district councils so I think as an interim, that's something NRC can do, but I'm very keen to continue the conversation about um, how we can look to uh, represent our youth, if not yeah, formally getting them elected onto the council, finding ways that we can engage with them on key issues. So yeah, great question and something I'm very keen on. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, look, we're nearly there with all of the questions and I just really appreciate everybody taking the time uh, to send their questions through. I'm just going to go to um, this question again. Just the question of logic behind the constituency boundaries created. I think just once again, if we can just say how it's been different from the past. Dale, there might be just another reinforcing how that comes together based on the legislation. Can we just respond to that question as it's just come through again. Thank you. So Kia ora. are we talking about the uh, general constituencies? Yes. 
And, yes, if, and if we can, we'll talk about the Māori constituencies one more time as well. Thank you. So with the general constituencies, uh, as Ben said, the legislation requires us to look at um, three things, and that's uh, regional communities of interest. So we need to identify, well, what are our, are our regional communities of interest? Uh, and then we must ensure that each of those uh, regional communities of interest have effective representation. So that's um, how many uh, councillors should be elected from each constituency, for example. Um, and then the third uh, legal thing that we have to look at is what's called fair representation. So that's really uh, each councillor represents about the same number of people. So we have to look at those and sort of in that sequence. So our first thing is, well, what are our regional uh, communities of interest? Uh, we look at what we have currently now. We look at what uh, what changes may have occurred in the last uh, three years, for example, uh, and then say, okay, um, we need to um, move some boundaries or nudge some boundaries to better reflect uh, those communities of interest. So that's re regarding the general constituencies. With regarding the Māori constituency, uh, as Ben said uh, earlier, um, we sought advice on this one. Uh, and the advice that came back is, yes, we can have two Māori constituencies, uh, but let's go with one initially um, and then review that after three years. And we might say, look, it didn't work or it has been working. Uh, do we need to review it? Yes or no? Kia ora, Dale. Thank you for that. Thank you. Look, I just want to mention Penny, our chair, is having technical difficulties. So when she comes back in, we can revisit some of her answers if we need to. Um, look, there's a question here. Ah, okay. So are we putting too much emphasis on local representation, given the challenges we face at a regional and national level? Amy, I can see you nodding your head. Would you like to respond to that question firstly? Um, yeah, well, it's a, it's a great question. And I think it's one of those, um, I mean, when it comes to representation, there's not necessarily one perfect solution. Um, my understanding is that in the past, and maybe Ben, you can fill in the actual detail, but um, there was an issue, and I'm not sure if it was with NLC or if it was with another council, but where the urban numbers dominated the voting. So when there weren't constituencies, there was kind of this thing where the rural communities ended up underrepresented and so that's where how we got kind of into the urban and rural constituencies um and yeah um, do you want to explain Ben that am I right about that sorry I don't I don't know the the, the history back in back in time and any uh, the issues that might have arisen for NRC um but it is a as it is a, a definite risk or issue for for the regional council and in particular, when you think about what the regional council does, um, the regional council is really about the environment, um, in particular, the natural environment. And that sits out, obviously, outside of our urban areas. Um, and that's one, one of the reasons that we chose to go with the proposal that we did. So in the, um, the current setup has two, um, um, two councillors from the Whangarei constituency. Um, however, now that, as I said, we've got currently got nine general constituent um, general councillors, but if we were to go down to seven, um, it could have been that we could have can still had two Whangarei councillors, even with seven general constituencies, given the, the, the population. Um, it didn't take much to draw a line around sort of outer Whangarei to be able to get the population numbers big enough to have two, two councillors from that largely urban area. However, the, the decision was made by councillors that know they'd try, like to try and get as, as much of those constituencies as they can more into those to those rural areas. Hence, the only the one, um, one Whangarei councillor in the proposal. Hmm. Sure, Thank you. Thank you, Ben and Amy. So I am just checking. Um, we've got most, ah, here we go. Here's a great question from Holly. Why do we think it's important that Māori participate in the process? And what sort, sort of discussions should council be having um, at a whānau, hapu um, and iwi level? 
Uh, just in time, Penny, do you want me to repeat? <laughs> Did you hear that question, Penny? No, okay. All right, let's just check while you check your technology. I'm gonna ask it again, Penny. Um, why do we think it's important that Māori tangata whenua participate in this process? What kind of discussion should be had at a Fano, hapu and iwi level? And of course, kia ora, Penny. Sorry, I was reading a message as well from our host. Um, so why is it important for uh, to Māori to engage? Um, I think, yes, yes, there's, um, let me just have a look again, one moment. Ah, so it's what sort of discussion should be had at a whānau, hapu and iwi level? Yes, Penny. Okay. I guess first and foremost, uh, are you enrolled would be the first one, because if you're not enrolled, uh, you won't be able to, to vote and therefore, you know, for, for council, it's about getting a, a really fair and um, strong, uh, reflective view on what we should be doing as a council and doing for our environment, for our um, climate change, for our uh, economy. Uh, so we, we want to hear from our community. And this is having um, Maori councillors, having Titimac. It's all great ways to hear from our treaty partners. Um, or to territory partners. So I guess the conversation would be, yes, um, let's do this. Let's get on board with the concept of having Māori wards, about having more Māori representation on councils and more input into the council decision-making table. Because mm -hmm. it's really important. We've got some important work to do. We've been doing a lot already around environmental things, but with um, everything that's going on globally, uh, including climate change and COVID, we need to hear from everyone. So. Mm. And very sorry, I apologise for my technical dropout. I'm not quite sure what happened. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Yeah, the important thing is you're back. Kia ora, Penny. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. And sure. then I'll come yeah. to you, Fianora. Yeah, just, just I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the question is maybe a little bit more specific and, and asking about um, why, why, what's the benefit of Māori joining and participating in this particular sure. process, this consultation <laughs> process? And therefore, the question is, what is the what is the discussion that Māori should be having then within this process? Um, I think there is a major benefit in being involved, def definitely. And I see there are two two key questions and um, um, feedback that we are seeking. One is we're suggesting a, a, a seven general constituencies, two Māori seats, and so we'd like to hear is that a good number? Or should we be going more? Should we be going eight and three? Which takes us to a total of 11, i.e. so there'd be three Māori seats and eight general seats. So I think that's the one question. The other question, and this actually touches on a, a bit of a theme through some of the other questions tonight, is around the general nature of the Māori, um, of going for that whole of Northern Māori constituency. And again, there might be some views out there if it's limited to two, Yes, actually, we think you should be drawing a line, I don't know, through the middle somehow. Or, and, or if we go to, if you go to having more seats and it gets up to three Māori seats, possibly even four, if we were to get to that space, there also might be some views on what a, a, a chopped up cons constituencies might look like for Māori. So those are the sort of two key discussion points as I see them. Mm. Kia ora, Whaianora. What are your thoughts on that question? I guess for me is actually, um, I think that it's, it, it, it is, again, another opportunity for Māori uh, to actually be part of discussions and actually those issues that we actually find close to ourselves, because we are part of the taiao. It doesn't matter. Uh, environment is actually really important to Māori and, 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 and given that they have another view in terms of the perspectives, mm. if you like, that are different to what generally is actually um, talked about, we find that our, our Māori, our mātauranga Māori is something that we actually put into action. Mm. So that means that us being at the table, actually actions things that are Māori mātauranga that we actually know can work 
And sometimes that is actually quite a, a part that's missing in mm -hmm. terms of decisions made by councils. Um, and, 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 and we've actually seen that as we worked with NRC over the years, we've actually been able to, to um, get our perspective across. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, even though there might be some, uh, we mightn't think the same, but that Mātauranga Māori actually allows councillors to actually elected councillors to see uh, another view, but also another option in terms of implementation. So those kind of things, I think, actually um, uh, 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 are questions that that actually is dear to my own personal heart because I think that being part of it, uh, uh, taking part and participating and engaging is actually really important, or else no one's going to hear you if you're mm -hmm. actually sitting back and saying all these things but not being able to get it across then it's actually momo daima in, mm -hmm. in you know we're sitting in our corners moaning about something that the council's doing but we're not at the table mm -hmm. tmac gives us that opportunity it allows us to put our views across to elected members and if if we weren't sitting at that table elected members wouldn't hear our kōrero you know, we'll be actually really fighting really hard out here to get to a councillor to hear us. So those those are the things that I think and and and, and um, that I actually consider that's important. But it also seems to me it doesn't mean to say, you know, when when we talk about nine or seven, just for example, we're just we're not just saying Maori. Maori can actually be part of those seven mm -hmm. the, and the extra is actually uh, um, when are we going to actually um, do these things instead of just moaning about it but you know mm -hmm. uh, and we need to put submissions in to mm -hmm. actually allow our voice to be heard um, because we're not saying anything and then we don't walk our talk mm -hmm. if you like mm -hmm. and and and, and um, being able to participate and to be involved with the discussion, I think is really important. Kia ora fine Nora. Maria, I'm going to come to you. I think the other part is at a whānau level too, is people, um, is whānau knowing what councils uh, do, mm. understanding that um, we have leaders within our communities and within Hapu Niwi that are ready um, to sit at the table. We've been asking for that role for a while. This is an opportunity to identify that leadership that can speak well on behalf of um, our whānau and our hapu whaianora. So thank you for that whaianora, for being one of those people uh, uh, amongst many that are ready to sit at the table now. Kia ora. Um, over to you, Māori. We'll just make sure you're off mute, Māori. Thanks for that. Just wanted to uh, talk about what Fire and Aura said. It's, it's about participation. Historically, I mean, go back deeper in time, it was uh, stale, pale male institutions. And now we've got uh, three, uh, uh, three and six male, female in, in the room. Um, historically, also, we've had very uh, low participation by Maori in, in local affairs. Uh, so when you haven't got someone who's a champion for you or you don't believe is a champion for you, you're not going to participate. So now that there are Maori seats um, for the next elections, we we would hope that there's going to be full or greater participation by Maori that aren't being or haven't felt heard to date. And we were asked earlier on this evening about um, youth seats. Same same sort of uh, principle. Once uh, there is more um, representation for youth, there will be greater participation and greater benefits right throughout the region. Um, yes, it's generating some really good questions. Um, I just want to check, I guess the, the bigger question that's been asked and the questions and answers, thank you, is what are the aspirations uh, for council to have, here we go, here's the question, I'll read it directly. What are council's hopes and aspirations for Māori voting and participating in the next election, elections? Penny. 
I'm, I'm happy for Amy to have a go at answering this. She hasn't had a... Um... Kia ora, Amy. Kia ora, thank you, Penny. Hey, I was talking while you were gone. You just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> I I think, well, yeah, I think it, it sort of just lines up with what Marty and Fire and Nora were just saying. Um, we hope it's going to be a big improvement. I mean, from my perspective, my background is um, environmental, and that's absolutely the values that I bring to council. And so um, there's a really amazing, um, as Fire Nora was just saying, the, the, the Māori worldview is, is so, um, at, you know, is one with the environment. And that's the NRC kaupapa, is we are here to protect our natural environment and to um, look after the people of Northland. And so, um, yeah, NRC is a great place for um, our Māori leaders to, to bring their effort and we absolutely appreciate what, what is already brought to us through our, our, our current channels. But yeah, these, these um, formal seats that come to the decision-making table are a great opportunity for the Māori voice to be heard and um, really consolidated as part of our decisions into the future. So I'm hopeful that there's going to be massive interest and um, a really exciting election process and then it will be a journey for us all as we move into the next trainium and, and we don't know which councillors of us who are already here will still be there, but um, I think we all feel really optimistic about what it means for the work that we do and um, yeah, what we can achieve for Northland because we need to be in the room together making those decisions. So I'm very optimistic. <laughs> hmm. Kia ora, thank you. Look, I just want to share a, a really... Um, Great comment that's come through from Scarlett Mokoraka as well too, in terms of contributing to the conversation tonight, but also to asking people to put it in writing through our submissions. But thank you for the Scarlett. It should be eight and three and more if possible, given Te Tai Tukaro's Māori population. It should be up to Māori to determine what the representation looks like, taking into account fair representation policies, but also with a tikanga element that allows us to consider what that means for ourselves. So I think that's a great way to sum up some of the corridor. Look, I'm weary, time is ticking, so I'm gonna take one more question and then I am going to hand over to Amy to wrap it up because we've got a video we wanna share. And part of that is to make sure we've got something we can share with our whanau, we can share with our community. So I'll just look for one more question and then we will look to um, wrap that up. All right. Ah. Will TT Mac be retained uh, once party councillors are on board? Depends on the decisions around the governance structure once there's a new set of councillors on board. Uh, that the governance structure is reviewed every time there's an election. Uh, it would certainly be my hope, uh, and you know, I don't know whether I'll be there or not, but it would certainly be my um, strong encouragement of any new council that they retain TT NAC. Um, very important aspect. And as I said, there's lots of lots of tools in our toolbox. Maori wards are one of them, TT NAC's another, and there are um, many more. Kia ora. Kia ora, Ben. And and, and, and just, just to confirm, uh, TMAC is, is a working party of council, so it doesn't actually have decision-making uh, functions. Uh, it's, it is an advisory working party. Um, so I suspect that'll come into that decision on whether they want to, the council wants to continue with TMAC or not. Hmm. Kia ora. Um, whaia nora. Pēhe o whakaro mō te moi moi a o o ngā uh, hapu me ngā iwi. I think I do, I mean, I actually agree um, because these are the mwemwea's that it's not a new mwemwea. It's something that our people always, uh, I mean, people that have gone before us, actually that was their aspirations. So we that are left behind now are carrying those aspirations and actually trying to work towards them. And I, and, and I think that TMAC has done very well because now I've noticed in now in, in, in the changes of iwi, especially iwi and, and hapu, uh, there are younger generations coming mm, through. 
in TMEX. So uh, I, I look at Ngati Wai, I look at uh, mm. other, other hapus, who, who, Ngati Fatua, all those other hapus, uh, Iwi. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, well, I, I smiled just then. Um, but, but all those hapus, uh, the Uriaho, you know, we actually got some great young people coming through. Uh, um, through TMAG, and, and, and so I actually support what Penny has said, that we actually can't lose it uh, at, at, at NRC level. We've actually got a good model that's actually worked since 2014, um, and I think that we need to continue that kind of uh, um, uh, having TMAG still there. And I like the recommendation, Penny, by saying, Next time, the next new uh, new uh, councillors, you will be recommending to them to keep the me. So come here to Kiafkoi. Kia ora, kia ora. Look, um, before I hand over to Amy to wrap it up for us, uh, I guess just um, really want to say thank you and just acknowledge also to Mayor Limited, making everything achievable Limited for working with our comms team. Um, to do this work and, and have us be able to have a corridor tonight um, together and, and bring the panellists on board to be able to share their uh, mātauranga tonight, which is a very important kaupapa for Te Tai Tokero. So I just want to say thank you again. Ano reira, um, kia koutou mā, uh, tēnā koutou, uh, mō tō tautoko i a tātou katoa. Ano reira, kia ora. So, Amy, I am just going to hand over to you. But before that, anyone wanting to make any final comments, thoughts? I guess the one thing that I would say, Oriol, and hopefully I'm not stealing anything that Amy is going to say, is that it, you know, this is a consultation um, and we want to hear from people that the, decision has, the decisions haven't been made. So um, the more we hear, the more we'll be able to consider. Kia ora. Dale. Just to remind everyone, encourage people to make a submission. Uh, there's still plenty of time. Submissions don't close till the 10th of September. So there's plenty of time. So we just encourage people to put their thoughts down in a submission and let's have a look at it. Jordan hmm. Marty. Yeah, just uh, this kind of, um, as a major first step in, in participation by Maori with having uh, two seats or whatever the result is at the next elections. Uh, I'm excited by it uh, and looking forward to it. Now, it's never not gonna be perfect in the first, um, first move, but this is a major first step. And over the next election or two elections, then it'll be refined to uh, what is gonna be a better model. But let's start off with this really good step. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora. Now, Fire Nora's left her chair, but not the building. So, <laughs> so I just want to pass over now. I can see we're ready to pass over to you, Amy. And if you can, just let our, our team in the background know when we're ready for the verbal cue for the video. Tilda, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, I was actually going to thank Fire Nora, but she, oh, oh, she's, she's back. She's back. Awesome. Look in my ear. <laughs> Um, I just Come wanted on. to say a special thank you to you, Fire Nora, because it's been actually really awesome to have you here. Thank you um, joining us tonight and, and bringing your kōrero to the table because um, we know that you've been involved in this mahi for a long time um, in a lot of different ways. So it's a real privilege to have you on the panel with us tonight. And I also just wanted to um, mahi to Mike Kaki as well, who helped us with a lot mm. of our online content for this mm. um uh, consultation that we're running so it's, it's been really awesome to have that partnership with the TMAC reflected in the way we are talking to our communities out there in Northland. Um, thanks to everybody who joined us online. I'm, I'm quite impressed. I thought everyone was going to be busy watching the news and um, yeah doing their interesting lockdown domestic duties so <laughs> uh, really fantastic to have so many people with us and some really really good questions. Um, I made a lot of notes, but the, the key thing is everybody needs to submit. So it is just a proposal, as Penny has said. It's, it's, 
it's our version of what we think we'd like to put out for you to consider, but it's absolutely for you to read and then um, give us your feedback. So please do um, make a submission. And this this um, webinar is going to be recorded and available online. So please spam all of your friends and families and get them to have a look and um, submit as well. We know everybody's on their phones and computers all day right now with lockdown. So it's perfect mm. time to get involved. Um, yeah, and just tell us what you think. I, I, like I say, I, I made a lot of notes and there's some things that I feel that we didn't, um, you know, have, have front of mind. So I really look forward to reading the submissions. Um, and on that note, I would like to introduce the video, which is going to summarise everything. And just thank everybody and have a good evening. Uda. Kia kotahi mai. Representation matters. So koiro kia, have your say today. Northern Regional Council are reviewing the representation at the council table. This is a fresh opportunity to look at how many councillors we'll have, which areas they'll represent, and how the new Māori constituencies will work. It's your chance to share your view and let us know what these changes might mean for you, your whānau, community, marae, hapu and iwi. If you're keen to know more, grab a kappa and check out the proposal on our website. Your voice and your view matter. We'd really like to hear from you. Do you think we've got it right or do we need to make changes? Hmm. Kia ora. So I am going to ask um, Marty to close us. We began with a karakia um, to ensure that everyone whether we're here or as well and safe in their homes. And in finishing tonight, we'll ask Marty to close with the karakia. And yeah, have a good evening and a good rest of the night. Noreda, tenakoto, tenakoto, kia ora na hui hui mai tato. Thanks, Oriel. Kia ora tato. We're new here, we're new here, we're new here, mai te uru tapu nui, ike wātea, ike mama, te ngako. Te tinana, te hinangaro i te ara takatu. Koyara e rongo, e whakairia ake ki runga, ki e tina, kuie, tāe ki e. Tāe ki e. Kā ki te koutou, pō marie. Thank you all.